Hello. 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 Everyone. Welcome back to the void. I'm player one. Player two. Welcome back to nine. Last time we solved the laboratory puzzle. We've got um this thing. And we got the whole seven flashback. Seven has his memories back. Mm. Akane died. She's a ghost. What the hell? She can't be a ghost. But then what the fuck was that? You saw Santa cry out in despair. She may have escaped last second. With what? Something. Who knows, maybe Hongo came back for her. So, th so then, why isn't anyone else recognizing that, hey, wait a minute, she should be dead. No one else knows her real name. Santa. Seven. No one else recognizes her. Maybe it's just because we're we, and we know that that little girl looks exactly like her. Exactly. Like, it's some bullshit. Here's some it would bullshit. seem so, but we are yet to be out of danger. You're right. Let's hurry. This exit needs the Uranus card, too. Hey, Junpei. Yeah, I know. All right, it's open. Let's... Okay, Neptune Key, let's see if you work. Yes! Oh, Where I think it unlocked. Put us? Incinerator. Incinerator. So this is the incinerator. This is the first time I've seen it from this side, but yeah, I think so. Then there ought to be a lever near the door. Yeah, right here. Pull that and the door should open. Got it. Chunga, 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 chunga. Let's go. Oh. Kicked in the nuts. <sighs> what the hell is going on? <laughs> What's wrong? Are you okay? Jumpy. You came to get me. Of course I did. I made a promise. I'm so glad you're here. So glad. Hey, what happened to you? I'm fine. I just fainted. I wasn't feeling very good. I'm feeling a lot better now, though. Are you sure? Yes. I just need to rest a little longer. I'm, I'm sure I'll be fine. You shouldn't worry about me. Santa. Hey, where is it? Where's the gun? You hide it somewhere? I don't have it. I got sucker punched and they took the gun. What? Who took it? What? Isn't that obvious? I took the gun. Hmm. God damn it. Ace. Back to where we were. <gasps> Just what the hell do you think you're doing, Ace? Except everyone's here now. Or maybe I ought to say Gintaru Hongo, CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. You have me at a disadvantage, and I don't like that. You know me, but I don't know you. Do you have any idea how much I've suffered? Can you even begin to understand my pain? The pain of prosopagnosia, right? Hmm. Another irritating insect. I don't think Junpei would know that in this timeline. And how do you know that? Hmm? Good question. No matter. If you don't want to answer, it makes no difference to me. This is a waste of time anyway. It's time for me to go. First is one. Give me your hand. Uh. Eight. And with this... Nine. The ninth man. Kubota's bracelet. I believe I've won this game. I've had quite a time playing with you. I must thank Zero, I suppose. Wait, what? Ace doesn't know who Zero is. Uh, uh. What the hell are you planning, Santa? At any rate, this game ends now. I will escape, and the rest of you will have a slightly less pleasant ending. I suggest you enjoy your final moments. Goodbye. Wait! What? Yeah. Uh -huh. Why isn't it opening? 
One more time. <laughs> now open! Nope. No! What is this? The, nine, Why? the ninth man's bracelet is upside down. Well, no, 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 no. He isn't six. The digital root should be nine! It has to be nine! Then why? Why isn't it opening? Maybe that's not a nine. It's upside down six. Or maybe it's a damn cue. I don't like your Q theory. It ain't what would me. what would Q be? Hmm. What would Q be? We'd go again to the hexadecimal bullshit. It'd be a number we can't reach with digital roots. Because it's starting. Now. No. Oh. Oh, that was close. Too close. Thank you, Seven. Don't mention it. Just one punch ain't enough for this piece of shit. After what he did nine years ago, I oughta rip him to pieces. But if a suspect can't talk, they ain't much good. Once he's locked up in a cell, we're gonna have a little chat. <laughs> nine years ago? Uh, then you must be... Yeah. You finally figured it out, dumbass. Oh. <sighs> Ace, you killed Kubota, Nijisaki, and Musashido, didn't you? Wait, Nijisaki? Oh, right. You don't know yet. All right, we'll just go through them in order then. Let's start off with Kubota. You talked to Kubota and managed to convince him to go into door five alone. You killed him without making it look like you killed him. The way I figure it, you had four motives. One. In the Nonary game, the number nine is dangerous. Whoever had the nine bracelet could join whatever team they wanted. Adding nine to any number doesn't change the digital route, which means that number nine could do whatever they wanted. You wanted to remove that threat as soon as possible. Two. You wanted the number nine bracelet for yourself so that you could make use of its power. In fact, you did use it in the murder of Niji Saki. Three, even if his number hadn't been nine, Kubota was a problem. He knew your past. He knew what had happened nine years before. You needed to silence him before he told anyone. Four, but last, and perhaps the most disturbing, you used Kubota as a test. You wanted to know how serious this nonary game was. Was it truly life or death or simply a harmless prank? Mm. Those are all the motives he said. Neither. Morphogenetic fields. You convinced him to break the rules so you could see what would happen. But it's only all the Junpeis. Hold on. He's the that was why you receiver. killed Kubota. But he was only the first. Next was Nijisaki. While everyone was off looking for the missing parts for the Reds, you ran into Nijisaki near the big hospital room. However, because of your prosopagnosia, you didn't realize he was Nijisaki. Chiefly because, when you met him, he was dressed like Snake. That was why you thought Nijisaki was Snake. No, that that's not... That was Nijisaki? Why? How did... I'll get to that. Anyway, you thought he was Snake. Snake was one of the kids in your experiment nine years ago. You remembered him because he was the blind kid. But his presence made you think. Snake was one of my subjects nine years ago. He probably hates me. But if that's true, why isn't he saying anything? Is he keeping quiet because he can't see? Or perhaps he's working with Zero to get revenge on me. Whatever the reason, anyone who knows my past is a threat. Before he tries anything, I need to get rid of him. That was when you decided you had to kill him. The murder weapon was Kubota's bracelet. You just waved it over the red. Verified your own number and then grabbed Nijisaki's arm and forced it over the scanner panel. Then, when the door opened, you kicked him in. Nine seconds later, the door closed. And then 81 seconds passed. And poor Nijisaki was dead. And you mean to say, Snake is still alive? Sorry to disappoint you. 
but I'm as good as new. <laughs> Thank you for killing the wrong man, but I can't say I like knowing that you wanted me dead. Although, to be honest, even if you hadn't tried to kill me, I would still hate you very much. <laughs> well, I wouldn't blame you. Last but not least, let's talk about Musa Shido's death. When Clover and I were investigating the chart room, you came over to talk to me. Do you remember what you said? Oh, oh a, pocket a pocket watch. watch. Might, Might I, take I take a look, a look at, at it? it? I handed it to you, and you left the room. You had been in charge of the Nonary Project. Of course you would have known the solution to every puzzle, which would mean that you also knew how to get out of the wheelhouse. All you had to do was place the watch in the indentation on the door to unlock it. With the door open, you could enter the captain's quarters. Musashido was there. Conveniently placed next to him was an axe that practically begged you to kill him with it. You picked up that axe and buried the blade deep in the other man's chest. One blow was all it took, and then you returned to the chart room as if nothing had happened. There was, there was something, something I wanted, I wanted to, speak to speak with you about, about Junpei. Junpei. Could you Could come you with me for a moment? I had no reason to say no, so I followed you to the wheelhouse. So that means... Wait. Hmm. If Ace didn't go in the one door, then Musashiro wouldn't be dead. Probably. So... Hmm. In like one of these, Lotus and Seven... Yeah, Lotus 7 and Clover went to the the one door, and Ace didn't. Maybe it was just a curse to get caught. So does that mean Clover killed him in that room? Probably. May hmm. Maybe. Because hmm. they still had the zero brace. Huh. When we stepped inside, remember how you slipped your hand into my vest? You pulled out a piece of paper, the one I used to cheat during the vote. But that wasn't really what you were after. Your true purpose had been to slip the watch into my pocket. It wasn't a very good plan, had way too many holes, and someone saying the wrong thing could have brought it all down around you. You must have been desperate, but what made you willing to risk it all to do it? Ace, Musashido's murder is the only one I don't understand. You obviously did it, but why? Because of this. What's with the paper? Just read it. Huh. Let's see. Number one, there are two ways you might survive this ordeal. The first is to win the nonary game. The second is for you to confess your sins of nine years past. I've prepared a camera in the captain's quarters. The images captured by that camera will be streamed through a satellite and distributed across the world. Simply look into the camera and repent. Once you have confessed everything, I will release you from this ship. To make your confession more credible, I have left you a witness in the captain's quarters. Oh. Perhaps he will confess with you. The decision is yours. Do as you please. Zero. Hmm. When I awoke in that room on D-Deck, I found that in my pocket. Hmm. That was why I chose door one when we voted. If I went through that door, I knew I could get to the captain's quarters. As you said, I knew how to enter the wheelhouse. My plan was to find the pocket watch before anyone else. If I could, then my alibi would be set. At least, that was the plan. Unfortunately for me, you got to it first. That sleight of hand was the best I could manage on short notice. You meant to kill him from the beginning then? Uh, Musashido, I mean. I only knew Musashido was the witness after I reached the captain's quarters. I asked him, and he answered. He seemed groggy. Perhaps he had only just awoken from sedation. I suppose Nijisaki was in much the same state. He seemed confused and disoriented when I encountered him. <sighs> but yes, you are correct. I intended to kill him from the beginning, even though I didn't know who he was. I proceeded to the captain's quarters in order to remove this so-called witness. Ace, you figured it out, haven't you? You were being manipulated. 
Yes, so it would seem. I was little more than a puppet, in many ways. Everywhere I went, everything was already prepared. The reds in the large hospital room were dismantled. Niji Saki was dressed like Snake. There was an axe in the captain's quarters. Musashido was delirious from the anesthetic, so he couldn't fight back. <sighs> Niji Saki as well. In retrospect, I can't understand how I could have fallen into such a simple trap. But yes, yes, this was a trap. It was Zero's trap. And I fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. I did everything he wanted me to do. Yeah, by manipulating you, Zero was able to kill three people and keep the blood off his own hands. All of this was revenge for what happened nine years ago. That's why this nonary game happened. Am I right? Santa? Hmm. Huh? What the hell are you talking about? I don't know any... Ain't no point trying to play dumb anymore, Santa. Actually, I guess I should call you Aoi Kurashiki, huh? My memory came back to me, kid. You're Aoi Kurashiki, no doubt about it. Never thought I'd be back in this room talking to you. <sighs> but hey, I guess this was all part of your plan, right? After all... The person who planned the notary game this time around was Zero. And Zero's you. Huh. <laughs> Looks like you really do have your memories back, huh? Well, I guess there's no point in hiding it then, huh? Yeah, you got me. I'm Aoi Kurishiki. I was one of the kids in the notary game nine years ago. I made it out. So did Snake over there. But there's one thing... No, I, I guess there's two things you got wrong. Number one, I ain't Zero. What? Wait, what? Sure, I was helping Zero out, but I'm really more of an assistant, like a secretary. But an assistant's only an assistant. I didn't come up with all this. All I did was follow Zero's orders. Hmm. Then, if you're not Zero, who is? Calm down there, Junpei. <laughs> didn't I say two things? You made one more mistake, Junpei. You just said all of this was revenge for what happened nine years ago. That's why this nonary game happened. But that's not it. Revenge isn't the only purpose. There's another reason you guys were playing the nonary game. <sighs> to save someone. Save someone? Right. You were brought here to help my sister. To save Akane. Ah. <laughs> uh... What the hell are you talking about? Akane Kurashiki died nine years ago in this room. I was there. I saw... Uh... What? What the hell? Where's... Where is she? Where's Akane Kurashiki? Uh, oh, my head! Uh, my head, it feels like it's gonna pop. Seven! What the hell is going on? I don't know. I don't know, I just... Oh, I swear to God, my head feels like it's about to explode! What was the Nonary Project? I'm sure you know already, but I'll tell you one more time. It was a project designed to test a particular phenomenon. And what was that phenomenon? For two organisms to communicate with one another in the absence of physical contact. The morphogenetic field theory. Could human beings use these invisible fields to exchange information? That was what this experiment was conducted to determine. <sighs> there were two separate locations. One was the gigantic, and the other was a building in Nevada called Building Q. The nine children trapped in Building Q were faced with numerous puzzles, copies of identical ones on the gigantic. They were told to send their answers into the morphic field set and transmit them to their brothers and sisters on the gigantic. The transmitters were put in Building Q, and the receivers were put on the gigantic. Each sibling pair was supposed to be split up, but... but there was a mistake. Akane was a transmitter. She should have been in Building Q. However, for some reason she was placed on the gigantic with the receivers, like me. Perhaps she was mistaken for someone who was supposed to be in Group A. Whatever the case, Akane ended up on the gigantic. <sighs> I think I've told you enough. You get it, don't you? I'm pretty sure you know where this is going, Junpei. Where what is going? Don't play dumb. You know things you shouldn't. 
things you couldn't. Uh. Uh. How did you know Ace had prosopagnosia? How did you know why Ace wanted to kill Kubota and how Nijisaki was killed? Were you surprised when you found out Ace was Hongo? And what about the coffin Snake was trapped in? How the hell did you open it? Well, mm. that's... Blast. He knew because I knew. Junpei was receiving information that I sent to him through the morphic field set. It's simple, really. How do I know the alternate futures then? Imagine a river that splits in two, like an upside down Y. The river flows from the top to the bottom, from a single stream into two branches. It only flows in one direction, it can never flow backwards. Information is the same way. It moves from the past to the future, but never flows back. That's why people at the river source in the past will never know about those downstream in the future. But the people downstream will never know about one another either. Information only flows along the path of the river. But I am different. I can manipulate the morphic field set to pluck knowledge from the future. I know what happens on either fork of the river. Even though the people on either fork know nothing about one another. Now, who am I? I am I, the ninth letter of the alphabet. But I am also zero. No, that's not true. I'm not really zero. Not yet. Perhaps you could say I am less than zero. Zero is my future. In nine years, I will be zero. Where did she go? June. No, Akane. Where did you go? Santa! Why is Clover... Oh shit. Freeze. Santa's got the gun. Hmm. Guess he picked it up when we weren't watching. Looks like he's turned the tables on Ace, though. Wonder how he likes having a gun to his head. Get up! Sure isn't about to take that gun off him for a minute, is he? Ace isn't putting up any kind of fight. I mean, I don't think I would either, but he just looks drained. Guess he's going for the door, huh? He doesn't need to verify to go through that door, but... Hey, what's your plan, Santa? What are you doing? He can't get through any number of doors with just two people. What the hell is he thinking? Didn't I tell you? I'm Santa Claus. It's time for me to go make a wish come true. That's it? That's all he's going to give us? What the hell does that even mean? Shit, they're out. And now the gate's shut. Looks like the rest of us are stuck in here. They're all looking at me. At least Seven's headache is gone. Seems to be alright. Well, I guess there's no harm in trying. Let's see if this door still opens. Damn! Well, it looks like this door isn't opening anytime soon. Oh, you mean we're trapped? So it would seem. What the hell is Santa trying to do? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, what? Have you considered where we are? There can really only be one thing Santa would do now. No. No, you can't be serious. Warning. Oh, but he is. Shit, we've got to do something. Maybe we can still get out through door nine. There's the red. Yeah, all right, we can do this. Just gotta... No, it's not gonna work. There's no way. The five of us can't open this door. 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 plus 8 is 26. 2 plus 6 is 8. Is there any combination that'll work? Junpei, can I borrow your pen and notebook? Sure, why not? I don't think I'm gonna need them. Ever again. Well, she certainly looks purposeful. Looks like she's writing equations. A lot of them. Huh? Ah, uh, man. She doesn't look very good. What? Hey, no need to be raping pages out like that. Jeez. What the hell are you doing, Clover? Give me that! Alright, at least Seven got away from her. Maybe now I can get a look at what she was writing. Let's see. Huh. <sighs> that is... No Lotus. Ha! <laughs> what? 
Then there's no other way. Lotus. Looks like she'd figured it out, though. Man, this is just too cruel. It's okay. Go. Lotus. Come on, you know we can't do that. Oh, don't give me that. I'm sure you'd love to get rid of me. God damn it, you idiot! Whoa, where the hell did that come from? Looks like she expected that as about as much as I did. Without... Uh, if you're not... Look, it'd be bad, all right? For a cop, he sure doesn't have much confidence. Bad? Uh, yeah. I, if there weren't assholes like you around, I'd be out of a job. Uh-huh. Look, I'm just not leaving you behind, all right? End of story. Does he like her? Seven. He's right. I'm not leaving you either. How adorable. Me too. You didn't honestly think I'd abandon you, did you? Uh, you're all idiots. Act as tough as you want, Lotus. We can all see you're about to cry. Where's that Connie? being said, however... However... Where's Akane? Her presence is a question. Did she live? Did she die? It's fucking Schrodinger's Akane. Is she, like, stuck in the morphogenetic field, just phasing in and out of our reality? Well, she died in an incinerator. Why do you think she has a recurring fever? Uh. Mm. I doubt we would be able to open the door anyway, even if we were to leave Lotus behind. Huh? Why? I trust you remember what happened to Ace? I couldn't, uh, see exactly what happened, but I was able to guess what he was attempting to do earlier at the Red. Oh, yeah. No! no. What, is what is this? this? Why? why? The, the digital, digital root should be nine! nine. It, it has, has to, to be nine! nine. Then, then why? why? What? Just to see, why don't we give it a shot? Give it a shot? Yes, that is what I said. Two, four, five, seven. Error. It's not nine. You were right. It ain't opening. But it did open nine years ago. The digital route was nine then, I'm sure of it. You think maybe they changed the settings? Perhaps. Shit. We can't get through the door. We can't get out. The walls are way too high. There's no way in hell we can get to that hole seven popped out of nine years ago. All we can do is stand here and stare at this door with a knife on it. I guess this is it. This is the end. I was... Oh, Akane. Akane vision. Oh. I was watching. I had watched everything that was reflected in his eyes. I was listening. Every sound that vibrated in his eardrums, I heard. Smell, taste, touch. I felt everything he felt. I knew. I knew everything about him. What he was thinking, what he was feeling, what he was sensing. All of his feelings and worries and fears became mine. My mind, my consciousness, was inside of him. Hey. Through the morphic field set, we were resonant, and we were as one. I was him, and at the same time, I was an observer. It started with a tremendous noise like a clap of thunder. That was approximately nine hours ago. A bomb had gone off on the ship we were on. That was when my resonance with him began. My resonant vent melted into him, and we became one, inside of Junpei. Somehow I found myself in Junpei's mind nine years in the future. But I didn't lose myself. I was living in two realities at once. One was the present, and the other was the future. Perhaps you can think of it as two movies showing on the same screen at the same time. Eventually it becomes difficult to separate them and determine which movie is which. However, if I concentrated, I was able to focus on one or the other. 
That was why I was able to grasp what was happening in front of me. Come on, over here! Who are these? Is that the fucking Weevil from Yu-Gi-Oh? Got a token big man. Chugs. Chugs. We're just gonna call him Chugs now. Chugs will not show up again. Oh. We have tiny, tiny one. And we got the background. That was my brother, Aoi. He was yelling. I followed him. Around me were seven other children. They all looked like they were about my age. Come on, hurry up! We ran down a long straight hallway and burst into the large hospital room. Everyone was arguing. Two of the boys got in a fist fight. The girl watching them began to cry. I want to go home, she cried. I want to go home. Another girl slapped the crying girl and glared down at her. It's been two hours since the notary game began. We were starting to fall apart. But just when all hope seemed lost, Light started talking. He was blind. Nine years later, we would call him Snake. Hello, everyone? Could you come over here for a moment? He was older than most of us, and his voice had authority and dignity. The fights died down, and we gathered around him. I have a little sister. She is very important to me. Right now, she is over in Building Q, and is desperately trying to send information over to me. Her name is Clover, and today is her ninth birthday. On her birthday? On her birthday. And yet her name literally is Clover. <laughs> As he spoke, he pulled something from his pocket. In his hand were nine four-leaf clovers. I was going to give these to her as a birthday present. I was outside picking them when I was abducted. I'm sure I've already told you, but I am blind. For a man who can't see, collecting nine of a very specific plant is... Well, it is difficult. But my sister means a great deal to me. And I hope that these would show her how much I cared for her. Since it's her ninth birthday, I thought nine four-leaf clovers would be appropriate. Every one of you has a brother or a sister in Building Q with Clover. For their sake, we have to survive. We have to get off this ship. Do you understand? If we're going to do that, there are three things you have to remember. We need trust and love, and we have to have faith in one another. If we can take all three of those to heart, then I promise that good luck will come our way. Did you know that the leaves on the four-leaf clover mean faith, trust, love, and luck? Those words are leaf words. So if you believe what I've told you, and you understand, then I want you each to have one of these. They're a promise between friends. He gave a clover to each of us. I took one too. Eventually, he was left with only a single four-leaf clover. He had one last thing to say. Now don't ever forget. So long as you have that, we will always be connected. Do you understand? When he finished, the tension of only a few minutes before was gone. We were calm. After that, we ran around the ship for a while longer, and opened several of the numbered doors until we finally found a door with the number 9 on it. In fact, there were two doors with 9 on them, and we found them in the chapel. We split into two groups and walked through the doors. Before long, we all found ourselves in a room with a ceiling that looked like an upside-down funnel. For some reason, this room had another number 9, but this time it was the only one. But if there was only one door, that meant only five people could escape. What are we gonna do? There aren't any other doors! We began to panic. Then, as if things had not gone bad enough already,
brother Aoi swallowed hard and answered, I think it means this room is gonna burn. Burn! The plaque on the door says incinerator, and that voice said that the incineration is about to start. And incinerate means to burn. No! Help me! Abject terror filled the room as everyone began to scream and cry. Every pair of eyes were filled with despair. High up on the wall, a door opened and a man appeared. He was a huge, frightening mountain of a man, as large as a bear. Nine years later, we would call him Seven. Don't worry, kids. I'm not your enemy. I'm one of the good guys. I'm a detective. I'm here to rescue you. Seven. The best man. The rest happened just like Seven had said it did. The four of us who had stayed behind were saved by Seven. We crawled through the vent, away from the incinerator, and slid down to the hall. Came out on the other side of door nine. On the wall opposite the door was a set of double doors. We went through those and began to run up the spiral stairs. As we ran, I led the way. Behind me were Nona, my brother Abby, the Snake, and Seven. The other children, the ones who had gone through door nine before us, were ahead. I could hear them cheering each other on. We ran and ran and ran. We leapt across as many stairs as we could and kept running. The stairs spiraled upward like a tornado. Eventually, I pulled ahead of the rest. Perhaps Nona had slowed them down. I didn't want to lose them, so I'd slowed down as well. I didn't stop, but I glanced over my shoulder from time to time to see if they had caught up. That was when I realized... Oh, no, where is it? Did I drop Jumpy's present? Oh, no! Hmm? That's why she got caught? I knew I had it with me when we passed through the vent. Then, had I dropped it as we slid out? I had to go back. I had to. But I knew I couldn't tell the others. They would stop me, I was sure of that. I didn't stop to think, I simply moved. I ran to the central hall, the room that connected to all the other areas of the ship. I hid in the shadows, and moments later I felt a rush of wind as they ran past me up the staircase. I waited until they were out of sight, and then I ran. I moved as quietly as I could, down and down and down. Finally, I reached the bottom deck. I ran into the hallway and looked around frantically. There it is! It was just where I thought it would be, sitting under the opening of the vent. I ran over and snatched it from the floor, but as I ran back towards the stairs in freedom... The door to the incinerator opened, and a man stepped out. It was Hongo. Taro Hongo. Nine years later, we would call him Ace. Ah, how wonderful to see you decided to come back. His smile made my blood run cold. It looked mechanical, as if someone had simply pulled up the corners of his mouth. Come with me. We must continue the experiment. I shook my head, eyes wide. Slowly, I began to walk backwards. One step, two steps, three steps. Then I spun around and broke into a run. I felt Hongo's hand close over my left wrist. I said, come with me. There was an edge of insanity to his voice now. I pulled as hard as I could. No, stop! Let go of me! Let go! I shook my body and flared my arms, trying desperately to get Hongo to let go of me. But I was still only a child. I was no match for a man like Hongo. Stop struggling, goddammit! Do as I tell you! He heaved on my arm, trying to pull me into the incinerator. I screamed. Help! And suddenly, Akane! the door to the stairs flew open. My brother Aoi burst out of it. Behind him came Seven and Snake. Uh, Akane! He cried my name again as he left toward Hongo. You came back! I cried out. But then, ah, you're too late, idiot! Hongo threw his full weight against my arm, pulling us both into the incinerator. Ah! The force fit threw me to the floor. I scrambled to my feet and looked toward the open number 9 door. Hongo stood between it and me. Behind him I could see my brother, his fists clenched. Those fists never reached Hongo. With the cold, heartless screech of metal on metal, the door slammed shut. Hongo glanced at me mechanically, his face registering that there was an object there, but not anything he would consider a human being. Then he turned away and walked to the red that sat next to the door. He reached into his pocket and removed two bracelets. He waved them both over the scanner panel. 
Two asterisks appeared on the red. He checked the screen, then tossed the bracelets carelessly onto the floor. What was he doing? What was the point? He made no effort to explain himself, of course. He said nothing at all, and walked past me as though I were nothing more than a rock by the roadside. A few moments later... The two other doors slid shut as well. Faintly, I could hear someone pounding on the door behind me. I turned around and ran toward the door with the knife. Akane! Akane! Are you okay? I could hear a voice from the other side of the door. A worried, frightened voice. Help me! My throat was already raw, but I screamed as loud as I could. My voice echoed lonely around the empty room. What should I do? I, I think I'm trapped in here! Where's Hongo? He went out the other door! What? Then it started again. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Incineration will begin in... Junpei Vision. Now is the time to nut up or shut up. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Holy shit. Man, I knew what it was going to say, but that is one hell of a creepy voice. I knew it! Uh, it's starting. Santa started the incinerator. Fuck! Man, I never thought I'd hear that damn voice again after nine years! What the hell? What the hell? What in God's name are you talking about? Oh yeah, she's kind of, she's lost. It's nine years this and nine years that, and when it's not nine years something, then you're talking about some sort of fucking experiments. You aren't making any sense. Uh <laughs> I'm sorry, Lotus, but we really don't have time to explain it right now. I promise, I'll tell you everything once we get out of here. But... Incineration will begin in 17 minutes. You know what that means, right? Incinerate means burn! Uh, what kind of idiot do you think I am? I know what incinerate means. Well, god damn it! Okay, okay, fine! I won't ask anything else. Talk about whatever you want. But you have to do something for me. Seven, figure this out! What? Why me? Just shut up and stop this thing! How the hell? There has to be some sort of emergency shut-off button. There isn't anything like that. How the hell do you know? Oh my god, I just realized. Mm. Adventure mode is Junpei Vision, and novel mode is Akane Vision. Oh. So Akane would have been the narrator the whole time. Oh. Because I looked for it nine years ago. Yeah, Lotus isn't happy about that. Can't really blame her. You know what, boys? Hmm. Damn. Yeah. We'll end it there. Uh, I've been player one. I've been player two. We'll pick it up another time. Goodbye. Bye.